Hello everyone, this is Norman Lawrence from Ganja Vacations Jamaica, bringing you another installment in our ongoing conversations with movers and shakers in cannabis in Jamaica, and uh, cannabis tourism in particular. Today's conversation is with Kevin Levy, Managing Director of Hido Wido, Jamaica's first resort-based herb house. Hello Kevin, welcome, and many thanks for talking with us today. Because you're not a standalone dispensary and part of a resort, did you have to jump through extra hoops to get your dispensary license approved? We started pursuing this license, I think, in 2016, whenever the laws were decriminalized. Right. So we had some unique challenges, um, as you said, because we're a completely separate entity from Hedonism 2. Right. Um, Hedo Wido and Hedonism 2 um, are two, you know, two, corporate entities. Yeah. two very separate entities. We're basically uh, a tenant right. um, on the Hedonism 2 property. We, we lease space from Hedonism 2. Um, but there were some concerns and some challenges from, from different areas. First, there was a concern of not wanting to have the, the, the dispensaries on large properties. And we specifically did not apply for a grower's license. Our intent from day one has always been to work with the local farmers um, in the area throughout Jamaica. We initially had no interest in cultivation and growing. And then I had to talk to the GHTA. I was the chapter chairman for the GHTA Negro chapter. So I had to talk to the GHTA about the GHTA's position about the hotel, having a cannabis license, and then also to the tourist board because you have to be licensed. You know, any, any hotel property in Jamaica to get a hotel license, you have to have that approval of, of the JTB. So I was able to have conversations with people in both of those organizations. And the official position of the GHTA was that that's an individual decision for each property, whether they want to have a cannabis dispenser or not. As long as they comply with the, with the laws of Jamaica, then it is each individual member hotel's decision as to whether a cannabis dispenser fits into their business model. With the JTB, my position with the JTB was, you know, what's, what's the difference between a dispensary that's located right next door to a hotel or one that's located on the property? So again, same situation. As long as we are compliant with the laws of the land and the rules and regulations of the CLA, then we shouldn't be treated any different than any other dispensary. Have you started a trend? Are we going to see other large hotels getting into the cannabis business? Or are you unique because of the clientele you attract at Hedonism 2 and the kind of experience you offer there? Well, you know, <laughs> I like to remind everybody that the, the Hedonism 2 guests are not that different <laughs> from the rest of the world. If you went back to Chicago or to New York or to London or to Kingston, wherever our guests come from, you know, you, you can't go up there and say, oh, that's a hedonism guest, that's a hedonism yeah. guest. Hedonism guests run the whole gamut of the, the, the demographics, the ages, the income, everything. What I noticed, um, and I, I've been in Negril and at hedonism since 1984, and except for a few years when I was running another hedonism property in St. Anne's, I've been in Negril all that time. And everybody knows that cannabis has always been a big part of the Negril culture and by extension the Jamaica culture. So I just thought that it would be a great opportunity. I thought there was a market for it and that it would it would fit into the offerings of, of hedonism too. And again, you know, we're, we're in the medicinal phase of it. Persons that we work with, you know, have the longest running cannabis dispensary in, in Denver, Colorado. So those are my consultants. So we're doing it by the book and we're doing it right. I can't say each hotel will have to make their decision as to how it fits into their market demographic. Because your dispensary is on a resort property, 
Uh, does it offer services that I would not find at a standalone facility? Oh, pretty much what we offer is the same. The dispensaries in Jamaica, I've been into probably most of them. And what I see they have, that they offer, is pretty much the same that we have here also. Spa services, for example. We have a license for a therapeutic spa. Okay. Which will probably open the early part of 2021. As you know, I mean, the tourism, the hospitality industry all over the world and in Jamaica right now is, is the lowest it's ever been. Right. I am optimistic. I mean, it started to come back every month for Hedonism 2, it gets better and better. Okay. And I expect that to continue, you know, throughout the rest of this year and into next year. Once the occupancy, you know, is back up to a reasonable level, then we'll open the therapeutic spa. Will the marketing for the resort now target uh, cannabis users? As I said earlier, you know, I mean, there is a large percentage of guests that come to Jamaica to the grill at the Hedonism 2 that are already cannabis users. And certainly, as you have seen, and the press that we have been receiving, we are letting people know that we have a dispensary on the property. And I do believe that there is a additional market of potential guests who are looking for a warm weather destination for a cannabis vacation that hedonism too will be appealing to them. Have you been surprised by anything so far in terms of what people are buying, how much they're spending, the mix of local and foreign guests, you know, that kind of thing? It's very hard now, Norman, to look at any trends because as I said, occupancies mm -hmm. are historically low. We opened July 10th. From a business point of view, it might have made sense to wait until things picked up, but we made a decision to go ahead and open anyway. What is happening now is, is a reflection of, of the occupancy levels. Until the occupancy levels get back to some normalcy, um, I won't be able to I won't be able to to kind of you know have an idea of any trend. Almost all of the dispensers in Jamaica are vertically integrated with an affiliated growing operation from which you may be buying product. Uh, do you see any reluctance on the part of these growers to sell to you because you're competing with their retail operation? The challenge, and hopefully that will change soon, is one, a lot of the smaller farmers have to become CLA compliant. We buy from growers who have their own dispensary operations, and we also buy from, from growers who are not affiliated with any dispensary. I haven't found anybody that doesn't want to work with us because we're competitors. I think that we're a unique situation where we're located on a hotel. Actually, I found the opposite. Everybody has been, you know, really interested and excited to work with us. So it's been the opposite. Weed has always been all over Negril. You know, guests at Hedonism 2 will have the option of buying at your dispensary or at a much cheaper price from guys on the beach. Is that something you think about? Not really. As you said, I think that the visitors, as, as you will know now, the expectation of the quality of the cannabis has risen tremendously. Right over the last, you know, five, ten years. And people have an expectation on quality. They have a they have a choice now. They have an option. That other option that has always been there. What is going to be done about it, you know, that's a decision that will have to be made. But certainly, you know, we you know we look at it and our intent has always been to provide the best available cannabis in Jamaica. That's our mantra. That's our objective. And if, if somebody is looking for that, then they'll know where to find it. As you look into your crystal ball out into the future, what do you see five, ten years out in Jamaica with respect to cannabis and especially as relates to the, to the resort industry and to larger hotels like yours? I think that over the next five to ten years, cannabis is going to become very mainstream. I was just reading an article yesterday on, on NPR, where Pops Blue Ribbon, who I'm sure you're familiar with her. Yes. Yeah, they've just um, introduced uh, a cannabis-infused seltzer. So I, I think that 
cannabis is going to come just like how the, the alcohol industry is, is just going to come very mainstream. So the question for Jamaica is, I'm not in the export part of it. I don't know, you know, the growers, what how big an export market there is going to be. Jamaican market in the scope of things are is a very limited market. I've always thought that similar to how you go to California, you go to Napa, you go to France, you go to Burgundy. It's more in the craft products. Right. So it is who in cannabis, you know, can produce the next Blue Mountain Coffee, the next Appleton Rum, you know. That's the kind of opportunity that I believe exists. Whether you have a dispensary in a hotel or you have it, you know, in Kingston, it's going to be whoever can produce the, 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 best, the best product whoever can have the best quality in any industry, any business at the beginning, there's a lot of people who jump into it. Right. And then the persons who end up staying are the ones who create the best products. One of the interesting trends evolving on the West Coast of the United States is cannabis themed weddings. Jamaica is the number one country for destination weddings outside of the United States. Can you envisage a similar trend in Jamaica? Oh, I haven't seen that, but I would, I would love to see that. That's something very interesting. Jamaica is associated and, and has always been, and it really is, we should find a way to take advantage of that and to really, and to really maximize that. Um, so any of those opportunities that come along will be excellent. Do you see recreational cannabis on the horizon in Jamaica? What I would love to see is edibles. I think that, you know, the, the, the recreational, that will come in time. Um, but I think that right now, what we should really focus on. And, you know, I mean, because I, I don't know what the percentages of, of U.S. consumers that, that do edibles. But, I mean, edibles is a big part of the market, you know, and, and we need to get to that. I think that's the next thing we should look at to normal. Edibles are not legal in Jamaica? Oh, no edibles yet. Our thanks to Kevin Levy, Managing Director of Hido Wido, for spending a few minutes with us today. See you all in Jamaica, man.